Hello, my name is Ryan and I'm a member of the Call Fire Solutions team. And if you're a user and you've seen some of our products, you'll know that we offer a range of products for different use cases. And one in particular, the voice broadcast campaign, you might have seen can send out a recorded message to a list of phone numbers that you upload. There are some use cases that a lot of users call in with requests for a product that will send out a recorded message, such as an invitation to a Christmas party, and also get some sort of RSVP. And you can also think of this as a, as a poll. Uh, you send out a recorded message with a question and you want to offer a series of answers. With the voice broadcast campaign, you can send out the message, but you can't get the input and save the answers that you get from the people that you're calling. To do that, and this is a common use case, to do that we'll use the IVR campaign. Now, it's a useful campaign. You can think of it as a voice broadcast on steroids. It's an enhanced voice broadcast that can not only send out your recorded message, but get input from the people you're calling. So I'm signed into my admin account right now, and I'm going to create a new campaign. It's going to be an IVR campaign. I clicked on Create New Campaign from the Campaigns menu, and I'm going to choose Hosted IVR. That's the first option from the top. But what we need to do on this page is script our phone call. We're actually going to design the phone call from the minute that it's picked up by either a, a person or an answering machine to the time that it's hung up, to the time that somebody hangs up the phone or we're done getting our input, playing our messages. So to make sure our message is heard by live answers, people that actually pick up the phone, or answering machines, we'll need to start with a tag on the Advanced tab. So I'm going to click over to Advanced. I'm going to pull down an AMD tag. That stands for Answering Machine Detection. A pop-up box will come up and you can give it a name. It can, it can stay as AMD. We'll just click on OK. Now you'll see we have two legs that came down automatically under AMD. One for live and one for machine. So everything that goes under live will be in the case where somebody actually picks up the phone. And everything we put under machine will be what happens when an answering machine picks up the phone. So a machine can't do any key presses or RSVP, so we might just play the message. And we might play a message that's specific to an answering machine. So it might say, call back on this number if you want to say yes or no. So we're going to be using a play tag, and this is what will send out our message. This is going to be a message that's going to play. That's why it's called a play tag. So I'm going to drag that down under machine. You'll see we have a pop-up box. You can click on recorded sound. and We have a drop-down menu that will allow us to select from the sound files we have on our account. Now I'm going to click on OK. We want to make this make sure that this play tag is indented under machine to be sure that it's going to be played in the event that an answering machine picks up the phone. So I want to click on this little fast forward button to make sure that it's indented under machine. So we want to play a message, and then we want to end the call after the message is played, after it goes to an answering machine. So we want to bring down a hang up tag to go right below the play. Again, you'll see a pop-up box, and we can hang, name it whatever we want. We can keep it at hang up. I'm just going to click OK. So now the machine leg of our call is finished. Now, for the live leg, we're going to play the message, and then we're going to get key presses. Since we're getting key presses, we're going to use this tag. Now, I'm going to bring this down below live, and I'll show you what happens. We want to hang it over live, so we want to drag it to hang. We want to put our cursor right over the live icon. So what I'm doing is I'm dragging the, the press menu tag and hanging it over live so it's going to be indented under live. And when things are indented as they are, that means they're dependent on this tag. It needs a name. The name really doesn't matter for our case, but we'll just call it RSVP. The max digits that you'll see under name the number of keys that somebody will press that's going to be recorded, that will be recorded by call fire. We're just getting a 1 or a 2, so max digits can be 1. And the timeout, which is 3,500 in milliseconds, is the time that call fire will wait for somebody, to, for somebody to press a key. So this is OK for our purposes. We're going to click on OK. 
We already have one key press that came down automatically, and we need two. So we'll need to bring down one additional key press. We're going to bring a key press to go right below the key press that came down automatically. And we have a pop-up box. So we, have, we need a key press for one and a key press for two. That is, one if they're coming, two if they can't make it. So this is, we're working on the second key press right now. So why don't we make this, in the case of somebody pressing two, we see we have in, highlighted in red, pressed, and we're going to put in a two. And the name, why don't we give it something descriptive, like just no. It's going to be yes, no, this is no, not coming. Let's click on OK. Now we need to modify the first key press and a play tag to put in our message in play and to design the first key press to handle the case where somebody presses one. So let's double click the first key press tag and that will bring up the pop-up box that we just saw. This is for the case where somebody presses one. So pressed will be one. In the name, and remember this is for the affirmative, we can just call it yes so that we know somebody's coming. Click on OK. Now we need to deal with the play tag. So let's double click on it. We're going to use a recorded sound. This is for a sound file that you maintain on the website, something that you've either uploaded or you've recorded using the voice recording utility. So we'll choose the appropriate message from the drop down menu. Click on OK. So now, under our press menu, we have a play for the message and two key presses, one for the event that they're coming, the one, and two for no. Now, we're almost done, except we need to record the responses somewhere. We want to be able to look at the call records page and have a list of who's coming and who's not, so we can export that to an Excel file and plan our party accordingly. So to record these key presses, we need to use a tag on the Advanced tab. So we'll click back over to Advanced, and we need this tag, a stash tag. So drag down a stash tag, bring it right over the first key press, the yes. So that's hanging it below it. Hanging it below the yes. And this is going to allow us to see who pressed one and who pressed two when we view the call records page. The name is not important. We can call it stash one. The variable, though, is important. This is what we're going to refer to on the call records page. And the variable the name can be something like response. This is the box for the ones, so the value will be one. We'll click on OK. Now we need to bring down a second stash tag below the no, and this is going to be our box to collect all of the twos. So let's drag it down to the no, and we're going to bring it right over, bring our cursor right over the no icon to make sure that it's dependent on no. Now we have the same box. We'll give the name stash2. The variable name again is response. And the value is two, because this is the box to hold the twos. So let's click on OK. Now our call is ready. We have the answering machine detection tag to discriminate between live answers and answering machines. In the case of an answering machine, we're going to play the message and then simply hang up. In the case of a live answer, we're going to play a message Get the key press one for yes, they're coming, two for no, and then we need to bring down a hang up tag finally below the live to make sure that the call is ended. Click back over to basic. We want to bring a hang up tag to go below RSVP. This is going to be the last thing, but we don't want it dependent on on any of the other tags. So we'll go have the name is hang up, that's fine. Click on OK. And it's not in the right spot right now. We want it to be directly under this RSVP tag. So to do that we need to click on this rewind button. It looks like it's a looks like the rewind icon. Click it once, click it twice, click it three times, 
And now it's in the correct spot. It's not dependent on any, any of these key presses, and it's not even dependent on the press menu, so we want it to come down. So our call's are ready now. We can save this dial plan by clicking on the Save button in the upper left-hand corner. So the name can be something like Invitation. Description. Okay. Now we've saved the dial plan. Let's click on next in the bottom right hand corner. It's prompting us to save it, but we already did. Let's just click OK. Now we give the campaign a name, specify that it's an outbound campaign, and now we're almost done. Now it's just like creating a voice broadcast campaign. So that's a simple use case for the IVR. It's something that the voice broadcast can't handle, but the IVR certainly can. So thank you for watching.